Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tencent LPL coverage in English. I am Tasted Ubbins with the one and only Soldra, a.k.a. Hubo, a.k.a. one of the most awesome people in this world. So we have uh, what, one of the most interesting men in the world, if I could say, if I say so myself. But uh, I'm very happy to be here with you today, Mr. Yako. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you're doing the same, my boy. <laughs> I'm always, doing very well. Always a pleasurable experience. So we have two fantastic sets for you today that some, you know, might not consider to end the best for, let's just say, a couple of uh, couple of uh, those teams there. So today we have LGD to start off versus Young Glory, and then OMG versus WE Academy. So two potentially ga potential games that people might consider just a little bit steamrolly. Yeah, and I mean, I think really, you know, out of these two sets, um, the first game really is the one to watch here, especially just because Young Glory has made progression, you know, in terms of the, the level of gameplay and their, the way they um, utilize their pick ban phase. Young Glory has made, you know, constant progression throughout their time in the LPL, while LGD has, you know, they... They, they are inconsistent, but, you know, some of their carries do falter at times. So I am interested to see how they play. Um, for the World Elite Academy OMG game, you know, I think we, should, we shouldn't we should be expecting that much out of the side of WEA, especially since they do have two new players who I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, as the game comes up. But, you know, this might be a game where OMG might break out some new picks or OMG might do something particularly interesting as they usually do when placing when playing against uh, lower tiered competition so I'm pretty excited for both games yeah something also worthy to note that just yesterday as a matter of fact it was WE Academy versus Young Glory in their best of two set and they did split at 1-1 so both of those teams are still tied for last place at one circuit point a piece by going yeah down, and that's it yeah they're both they both share the eighth place title obviously you know one of those teams would have liked to grab the 2-0 but i think world elite academy considering how badly they played in the first game are pretty happy that they were able at least able to salvage one point i think the big thing there was that in both games young glory didn't uh, you didn't pick and ban that well, even though that has been an area of strength considering how weak the members of each of the individ individual members of their team are. So hopefully, you know, that changes today. Well, going to be fantastic to see. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like we're uh, going to be getting into the pick ban phase soon enough. Game's about to be starting just on schedule, and we'll be able to get into all that fun stuff. Worthy to note as well. After the first set, as there is an hour-long break in the action, we're going to be hosting another episode of Finger Trap, which you may have seen last night in its <laughs> premiere with uh, that <laughs> Pyrotechnics, Kelsey, and Frost Grin, three LPL experts right there, but we'll be hosting a set of it as well, see if we can compare to the knowledge levels that they can provide um, and see if we can get some talk and chat in there to lighten up the time period that you all be sitting there just kind of sitting doing nothing but... Yeah, and one thing I would like to point out is that, you know, we, we just saw a kind of a slight uh, recap of yesterday's game between um, Edward Gaming and Starhorn World Club. Obviously, you know, two of the big powerhouses in this league, and I had, predict I had actually predicted um, Edward Gaming to win. Even And so, you know, needless to say, I am slightly surprised that Starhorn is able to pull out, you know, was at least able to split that set, but... You know, the fact that Zero won the MVP for that game is very indicative of the way that Starhorn Royal Club really likes to play. Just because, you know, when they're when Starhorn Royal Club is losing, they're usually losing really badly and they're getting, you know, completely stomped on all aspects of the game. But when they're rolling, it's usually Zero. You know, Zero, you know, he has the basically has the weight of the world on his shoulders. He has to ward, he has to, you know, make a few calls, he has to manage UZI in lane, he has to, you know, he, Zero is usually the one who, uh, s you know, initiates team fights and or disengages from team fights. So, you know, the support in the Chinese scene has to do a lot, of, has to do a lot. And I think, at, at least this thus far in the LPL season, Zero has looked like the best support in China. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you pretty much got the entire spiel right there. Nothing can, uh, I think it match what was just said there. You know, you said a lot of, 
you know, China's supports take on the world. They're a lot. They're not as known, you know. China's known for its yeah. eighty carry strength, and a lot of people don't know what goes behind the scenes down there with those supports. I mean, some people say supports carry the lane for the first twelve minutes of the game, so always yeah, worth it out. Yeah, China, China, the Chinese support is, you know, it is, and we're seeing that obviously we're seeing the, some of the teams come up here. It, uh, just a reminder that the first game will be Young Glory between Young Glory and uh, LGD Gaming, but the the role of the Chinese support is a little bit weird because usually even when even when you know playing champions like Nami for example the support in China will always be expected to engage team fights and or to be you know s protecting the AD carry so they have a, obviously you know they have a lot of jobs to do and not all of the supports accomplish those you know accomplish those roles to the best of their abilities or to the best of the way that role can be played so hopefully i mean i am very high on both supports from these games but you know well l let's just i'm gonna i'm going to wait until the end of the first game be before making a call on any of these certain players because a lot of these players have you know they've had bright spots they've had um spots that have been not as bright <laughs> i guess <laughs> And I think that the, the, only, the one true you know, superstar, if we're talking about really the player to watch out for, I think the one true superstar so far you know, between these two teams has been Wayless, the mid laner of LGD Gaming. Yeah, I was thinking about for a featured matchup, just to start off before we even get into the game, that it might be the mid laners because Wayless has had just a big, big, severe impact in what LGD has been able to accomplish. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, and on the other side of that, I mean, you know, Wayless, obviously, I think he, you know, just the fact that he has a very wide champion pool, so he's very flexible, very hard to ban out, and he all, he's also able to adapt to any of the strategies that his, um, LGD Gaming wants to run. But on the other side of the coin, you know, we have Young Glory's Jiang Gun, and Jiang Gun has struggled the split despite having a one or two really, really solid games. And the problem with Jiang Gun, and you see right here, you know, I was talking about engage heavy supports, you know, Yan Sir playing his past three games on Leona, but Jiang Gun has had problems when either LeBlanc or Yasuo has been banned. So, you know, when LeBlanc or Yasuo is banned, you usually see him go to champions like Lulu or Ziggs. So it's it's possible that we might see LGD Gaming look to target, ruthlessly target, um, the mid lane, the middle lane of YG um, in this first in the first pick and ban phase of the set. We'll have to see what they so choose to go for. I mean, you can see those cameras zooming out, and now it's time for them to go over the lineup of LGD. So we might as well, you know, go over that as well that we kind of didn't touch on YG. So I guess we could uh, clear up those lineups really quick. Just get that all there for you. So top lane for LGD gonna be Star Jungle Quan mid Wayless. And he carry 17, and then support is PYL, their team captain. And also on YG, top lane number one, jungle again, Fu, mid, Dian Goon, AD carry, Sen Long, and then support, Yancer. Worthy to note lineups and all that good stuff. So I think the question is, what what kind of early predictions can I get out of you, Mr. Mr. Hubo? Mr. Mr. Shim. It's, Shim. it's actually Professor Mr. Shim. Mr. Bo, Professor Shim. Dr. Professor Shim. Sh Shim, PhD. Maybe one day, but um, I think you know. Obviously, right? I'm not going to be taking any risks today, but uh, so I do think that LGD Gaming will 2-0 the side of Young Glory, especially since Young Glory did have a fairly demoral did um, have a fairly demoralizing one loss to World Elite Academy, despite you know, generally overall splitting that set with WEA, um, just. You know, LGD has a lot more strengths. You know, both in both strategically and in the players themselves. I think, you know, Star can be very good when he wants to be. I also think that 17 is. Wait, I just got it mixed up. Sorry, Star can be good when he wants to be, and I also think that Wayless is, you know, just an outstanding player. While on the side of Young Glory, you know, Zhen Long was the member of YG who played fantastically. In the, pe in the two games against World Elite Academy. And um, number one also did some good things. But, you know, besides those two players, just the, other, the team looks really weak. And you can never, ex you never know when number one and Jin Long are going to show up. So 
uh, despite the fact that every member of YG at some point has had a pretty good game, you know, their win-loss record speaks for itself. You know, they've, they have one point in the LPL. This is the fifth week of the LPL, right? And they've had, sorry, is this the fourth week? Yeah, this is the fourth week of yeah. the LPL, and they've only had one point so far, right? So, you know, they've played a myriad of games against a myriad, you know, various opponents. They've, you know, they've brought out a lot of different types of strategies, and they've only been able to split one set against the worst team in the LPL or against the team that shares the title of worst in the Chinese League of Legends Professional League. So hopefully I'm wrong, but I don't see YG putting up that much of a fight right here. On the other hand, though, if LGD is able to, if LGD is able to really cleanly, you know, put away the boys from Young Glory, then that might indicate really good things because LGD has had consistency issues. So to see LGD firmly, uh, not demolish, but firmly, you know, beat lower tier teams would be very encouraging for the future prospects of this organization. Well, they may have consistency problems, but it seems like at this time YG and WE Academy, as it stands, uh, they don't have consistency problems. They have problems just trying to get up to that level. So we are into picks and bans now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see. So just chug along right here. We have Lee Sin Thresh banned out versus LeBlanc and Jarvin. So targeting out those two junglers and potentially support mid laner. Yeah, I mean, these are all really standard bands right here. Of course, you know, we were talking about before, we were talking before um, banning, trying to ban out Diangun, and he will pick up instantly pick up the Yasuo. So what I mentioned before was that Diangun plays two champions very well. He plays the LeBlanc and the Yasuo as his main, you know, go-to uh, mid lane carries. And so when one is banned, he will usually pick up the other. So Yasuo is a good pick. But at the same time, you're giving up really two really big priorities and Potentially, you know, the Kha'Zix is going to be locked in, but, you know, now LGD has the choice between Lulu and Kale. So, you know, Kale, at least in, in China, at least, and I think in other regions as well, Kale, I mean, sorry, Lulu is a first rotation pick. I, some would even argue that she's even more valuable than Kale just because of the um, be, just because of the utility she offers. Remember that this is 4.9, so we are a little bit behind our uh, North American and European counterparts. So... Lulu and Cossacks locked in, and those are two very big priorities for LGD, mm -hmm. and I think they're feeling very good about their pick and ban phase so far. Yeah, two very at-home picks to start it off. Quan definitely on that Cossacks, a big, big tier one pick for him, we'll say. So on the flip side, that Kale was left open and is going to be a surefire lock-in for Young Glory. Vi is the hover as well, so we'll see if they go for that one, but it is actually going to transition into a Leona lock, and now we pretty much have the answers pick up right there unless we're going to see some kind of anti-metally on a jungle but if it's anywhere to happen it's lpl yeah honestly if we see brahm jungle then we might as well see leona jungle one day even i think i actually think that leona jungle is viable but that's a story for another day so let's talk really briefly about yg they have a bunch of power picks right now you know speaking of power picks leona is very valuable in the chinese lpl just because lpl teams have hard times finding sources of crowd control and engage so having that instant you know um the solar flare into zenith blade comb combination having that instant cc is really valuable for the members of um young glory to have now lg now lgd this is a little bit weird from lgd because i you know, obviously, Wayless can play any champion very well, but Ziggs is not a champion that, you know, does a lot to carry games. He's, Ziggs is more of a, you know, Ziggs is a champion that's supposed to extend games to the later, you know, to, the, to its later stages, to the 30 to the 40 minute mark. And considering that LGD has very, don't have a lot of late game threats on their team it's interesting to it's puzzling to see why they would want to get potentially give um yasuo and kale time to scale alternatively you know th this might just be their plan to you know contest the early dragon you know get a 2v1 lane switch push down a turret rotate um, contest the early dragon, rotates towards the mid lane, and then end the game really cleanly. So LGD clearly has a game plan going into this one, but you know there are a lot of places where LGD's comp can go wrong, especially against the team fight potential that YG actually has. Well, YG's got a lot. YG's composition is just simply you know intervention on the vein, just protect our vein with whatever you've got, and then have Yasuo try to get some knockups and basically jump straight to the back line, which. 
if all works out for them, they definitely have a stronger late game composition than LGD at this point in time. So all the picks have been locked in. We can see everything pretty much at our disposal here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's worthy to note, of course, everybody kind of mirroring on the summer spells for the most part, except for the mid lane where Ziggs will be bringing the heal. And then, well, for YG, Dian Goon is going to be opting for the ignite. Yeah, I really want to comment on Zhenlong's vein pick because, as we said before, in the two games that Young Glory played against World Elite Academy, Jen Long was very much the, you know, the hard carry, quote unquote, hard carry for those two games. So Vayne Vayne is an interesting pick. It is important to note that Jen Long does play Vayne very well, and it is a pocket pick and a very, po it is a very popular and strong pick for him. So I'm interested to see how that will turn out. You know, if you're a mem, and Vayne isn't that bad because you know, obviously Vayne is vulnerable to just standard lanes and a Morgana. Lucian Lane has, a, has the potential to do a lot of damage to Zhenlong's vein. However, you know, given that the side of LGD don't have a lot of frontline threats that can deal with the mobility that Vayne possesses in the mid to late game, you have to wonder how LGD is going to be able to con well, to demand team fights, especially since that, especially since right now, their only sources of engage are either a dark binding from Morgana, and or a you know a stealth Kha'Zix, a stealth Kha'Zix into Leona Wild Growth, uh, into a Lulu Wild Growth ultimate. So LGD is going to have to play very carefully here. Of course, we might just see a you know a straight up stomp where all the lanes are winning, but. Should that not be the case, then YG have put themselves in a very good position here. And ooh, uh, nice lady right there. <laughs> Hello. She, winked, she, she 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 winked at me, Nick. Does that does that mean something? You know, is that a sign? <laughs> DM DM right meow. So, ladies and gentlemen, there was a loading screen right there. We'll be getting into game as soon as humanly possible. As you can see, the camera zooms out all the way, and you know what that means. It means we're pretty much onto the rift. The zoom in signifies that the game is underway, ladies and gentlemen, in this week for Team Young Glory versus LGD, a team that some might refer to as a potential upset for YG and uh, an easy swing for LGG to start it off. So as you can see, we're into the game. The question is, may we see any early harass, any early invades and whatnot? Yeah, um, both of these teams do fairly well in level 1. I think YG actually does very well in level 1 considering the CC they have and as well as the fact that they have a Yasuo. Um, I think, I honestly do believe that YG is going to be looking for the lane swap right here. So it's interesting to see what kind of early wars they put down in order to demand um, a lane swap. But it doesn't look like there will be, you know, there will be too many shenanigans, at least early. They are all positioning around the Baron pit. I would also like to mention to our fans that this is a live broadcast. You know, I think that some of our uh, some of our admins are sleeping on us, so hopefully we'll get that fixed soon. Yeah, um, should be should be fixed asap. But looking at a potential early invasion here, the trinkets come out and they will be able to clear a little bit. Pink in the brush from Yancer, so he got behind everybody, and now that's two down right now for YG. They're just gonna actually back out, wait, see if they can get a potential catch while lurking in the depths of that LGG jungle, but. I don't think they're really going to bite on it. They've got a lot of ways to basically spot out. So, why do you get forced? Yeah, and I mean the fact that Leo, the fact that uh, Jan Sears Leona bought a pink ward, and then the, uh, cons and the and the two consumables basically kind of gives away the fact that um, Young Glory will be looking for the lane swap. And I did, I do think that LGD did get a pick of Young Glory um, of Jan Sears Leona, so they'll be able to predict where. Um, that vain Leona lane is going to go, but it looks like that LGD is just going to run with a lane swap, and I think this, that this is a fairly solid early win for YG in the early game, especially since the Lulu arrived very early instead of double jungling. It's going to be a lot of pretty good free oh, farm. God. Definitely going to be a lot of pretty good free farm to Zhen Long on the vein pickup. Oh my god, Quan! Yeah. <laughs> Trying to come just a little bit ham and early on there, but... Well, Dian Goon's going to make it out. He's forced to back, but very, very early pressure. Now we're seeing back to the blue side, and it will be the jungler going up with the Kale. They'll take out this blue buff. Get a little bit of double jungle going on there. It's 0-0 zero zero right now. 2 minutes, 40 seconds in, ladies and gentlemen. 
just underway. The back has already been forced onto Dian Goon, so he's coming back to lane with a ward, and we'll see how he handles now at a little bit of a CS. Diff well, no, he's actually kept it even so far for somehow. Yeah, it's it's mostly just the um just the waves pushing differently. Just so the waves. very yeah, it's a very interesting move right here by the side of LGD to actually dis to actually you know push in that lane really hard. But you know we do have the correct response coming from Young Glory right here to either you know the choice the decision making you know the decision was to either have um, number one teleport to the bottom lane and try to collect that farm or posture around this top turret and then potentially you know start pushing the waves very quickly so it does look like that the members of yg are going to stick up here as wayless and i think wayless and um jangun trading some blows it's been a, oh but we see a fight right now yeah it's been been a while since the four rios jump in as well and there's going to be the repel up and in well he's taking a lot of damage that's going to be first blood over and look at that star goes down for the count at least pick it up quan forced to flash over the wall but pyl from the backside and that is a low low jungler of your yg so they want to back it out of here take their first blood victory and just back off to safety yeah, LGD really overestimated themselves right there. They thought that if they had sent, since they sent PYL up, that they could demand enough pressure. And we might see another fight right here. Well, maybe. I mean, it's a 3v1 here. Poor Dian Kuhn in the middle lane. Might be caught out of position, oh, but he will escape. be able to just dash out. Very nicely done. So yeah, now so, L so what happened was that LGD actually, the members of LGD actually thought that even in a 3v4 that they could scare the members of Young Glory off. But, you know, YG decided that, you know, they weren't going to take it and that they just, you know, basically the double jungle from Young Glory decided to camp in the top lane and make sure that should a member of LGD come their way, that they would be ready for the, they would be ready with the appropriate answer. And so very nice first blood from Young Glory. Yeah, they're grouped up trying to take out little Star. He's just a Lulu trying to live life and run away. So we'll get caught out in the jungle, but be able to just walk away as well. And I mean, you see, yeah, you, Young Glory's map movements are so much better right here. I mean, it's kind of clear if you look at the opposite sides of your mi of the mini map. I mean, you'll see PYL. PYL isn't actually doing that much um, in lane besides leeching experience off of his AD carry. Gen <coughs> not sorry, not Gen Long. I keep getting them mixed up. XQ. Besides le um, leeching experience off the AD carry, while Yansir has been roaming all around the map looking for picks, trying to deny as much of LGD's jungle from Quan as he can, especially since, you know, Kha'Zix is pretty vulnerable in the early lanes, so it does look like LGD is going to take that first turret. They decided that, you know, given the fact that the members of YG um, got that very early kill, they didn't want any snowball to start, so they w they are going to take that turret and try to convert that into another objective. It looks like, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether they'll go for Dragon or the... Oh, but it looks like the double jungle duo from LGD goes to the top lane. So very puzzling map movement coming out from the side of LGD. You have to wonder whether Young Glory is going to let this lane push to the bottom second tier turret i actually think that you know both number sorry both star and quan should have come and done dragon well they might have a little bit of puzzling rotations but yg's definitely been crisp in their movements and objective taking early on in this game it's only six minutes in but even a big big compliment to them so down in gold by 100 but they are pushing up this tier one top lane turret and it's pretty low to fall so they could potentially try to make a run at it. Quan is en route and uh, wants to wants to try for this 2v2. Is AD carry and support <laughs> heading up back to the top lane. They want this 2v2 to go, and they want to make this 4v2 happen. Definitely not going to be good for YG if they do get caught just kind of chilling up That's in the top good. lane. So heading up. Everybody's nice. here. Oh. Going to get the slows. Good Glitter Lance. Quan jumping in. Megan for a bomb as well. This is not good right now for Yinfu and Yancer. They're just on the run hardcore. Sorry, Zhen Long, whatever. The lineup's just too hardcore to talk over. 1-0, so nothing happens to that. They still make it out. It, these lineups, they just they just kill me to start it off, but we'll get there, ladies and gentlemen, as a whole. 1-0, LGD, oh, training on the top lane tier 1. I love you, Hubo. You keep me sane. No, and I would, you know, in talking about keeping people sane, I would actually like to mention that I was insane in thinking that it was Star who was playing. This is actually 17, so sorry to the fans for getting that wrong. Uh, you can flame me all you you would like because that was a pretty bad mistake um but to talk actually to talk a little bit about 17 because i've seen him i don't know why i had that slight mental 
breakdown. But to talk a little about 17, I've actually been pretty high on 17, and I know Kelsey Moser is pretty high on him too. So, I mean, hopefully he does play well, and I think he's he has played Lulu before, so let's see if he can make anything happen. And very good teleport coming out from that Lulu to collect the farm in the bottom lane. Yeah, if we take a look at our kind of first CS go-rounds here is Answers tank a little bit of damage, but it looks like he and Jen Long will both be able to escape. I mean, 36 to 15 on the top laners. YG also initiating the dragon, so trying to escalate Goldly. There is no ward coverage in the general vicinity. And Quan and Wayless, I mean, they're at the blue buff. They could spot it out if they wanted to. Mega Inferno Bomb is down, but they have no idea of what's going on. They're going to take that blue, give it up to the mid laner. And this should be a free dragon over to YG after they nice little steal it up. So 8 minutes, 26 seconds in. This one will be going down just a bit. And that is the gold lead right now. 600 over to YG. Yeah, really, really beautiful. They noticed that 17 was actually freezing the bottom um, the bottom wave. So what they decided to do was that they saw that there were no other objectives to be taken. And, dis and you know, they had basically had two options. Go for a two-man gank or get the dragon. And they, they, they do decide to collect the collect the global gold, you know, the global experience, and basically get their first objective of the game. So YG, with a solid, you know, they've been looking very good despite the fact that and they're only they are even in gold and i think that most of that can be attributed to how well the members of lgd farm so tier one top lane turret gonna be falling down that's two to nil in favor of lgd right about now and well the gold lead still staying tied up at twelve thousand apiece still only one kill gone by nine minutes 20 seconds in and that goes to yg on the first blood and well, top laners or 80 carries, if you will, and supports, both duking it out just a little bit. The difference is, though, YG have no place to go. Their turret is down, so if Quan wanted to try to go for this kill in a 3v2 situation, he could potentially make it easy. Yeah, it does look like Quan is trying to find some avenue for a gank. The problem, of course, is that you know either their, you know, their bottom lane is freezing, it's very hard to gank a Yasuo, <clears throat> and they have very little vision on the uh yg side of the map but it does look like kwan's going to go for this anyway let's see if he can make anything happen is lurking in the depths but the answer doesn't want any of that he is sitting on a ward so they will be spotting it all out kwan going for a leap but uh thinks he can fly drops like a rock back to the ground no no success on the gank but it does keep Yancer and Jen Long kind of on their toes, and it does actually force Yin Fu to make an appearance up here on the top side of the map. Yeah, you can see kind of what the different goals of both teams are. You know, Young Glory, what they want to do is push down as many turrets as they can. They already have two turrets down. They really want to make sure that they can, you know, after pressing their advantages in lane, they can rotate towards this mid lane and start taking down the middle lane turrets. However, YG, all that, all they want to do is, you know, either push the waves back up or freeze them so they can extend the game for as long as possible. Let um, Jiangun's Yasuo get back. Let, and we might see another fight right here. Oh, just waiting for it. Here comes the Kha'Zix jumping up and in with the stealth up. A knockout, last breath combination. Wayleft taking some good damage. Nice Intervention being used up in the middle lane on Dian Goon. Megan Furrow Bob not nice doing much. Kill, but look at that one over the wall. Dian Goon picks up the kill on the Wayless. He is down for the count. Two to nil. YG, two kills up. And this turret in the mid lane being pressured out as well. There are four members here with just a little bit of a teleports coming in as well. A dive oh, in the top lane, but that is going to be Zenlong going down. Tower aggro being judged nicely, but PYL taking some good damage as well. Can we get a kill here? That's one down. PYL's down, but XQ trying to duke it out on a turret. There is no intervention. Leona's coming in to save the day. XQ could be caught between a rock and a hard place. He's going to get stunned up. He's going to get nice jumped to with his... Kill. Oh, wait. No, he flashed up. Did he just get out of play? Trade it one for one. Nicely done. AD carry and top laner down for the count. Very well done, and number one pays the price. Yeah, really well done by XQ, even though LGD does lose the overall trade. So, Way I, don't, I actually don't think Wayless, you know, misplayed right there, but there was a small failure in communication and vision for the side of LGD. You know, the quite frank, like, basically, you know, what happened was that YG initiated a gank, and even though LGD started pinging it out, they just rotated really late. So if they had been in place, you know, if they had proper, if they had, you know, had proper positioning around the mid lane, they could have really easily turned that, turned those two kills around, but it does look like it will be a two kill, um, two kill swing for the side of Young Glory, just really well done from the, um, from the members of YG. Young Glory open up here with a 1,000 gold advantage. Young Glory actually coming out swinging, uh, definitely defined in LPL as one of those teams that 
does not have a lot of how you say uh, team play skill and all that good stuff. So yeah, one point <coughs> on the season thus far with only one win against W Academy, and that was a one-one tie. So Young Glory, you know, kind of maybe moving some heads around here, starting up with a nice early game lead. Yeah, and they're definitely they're definitely turning my head, especially since you know look, look at like the, look at the kind of initiatives that Young Glory are taking to winning this game, and you know what they really want to do. And oh, we're gonna see a small skirmish here, I think. Oh, well, there's a Zenith Blade jump up, and a Satchel Charge actually gets flashed, but nothing uh, nothing gonna come of it. There was a Void Assault yeah, being used up. But. So back to what I, what what I was um, saying previously. Basically, Young Glory is showing a surprising and unfor and before unseen amount of initiative in terms of trying to press as many objectives as they can and usually it would be you know it should be the members of LGD who are grouping the mid lane who have the roaming support to try to make as many picks as they can instead of LGD is trying you know is really kind of leaning back they're kind of they're reclining a little bit where where they should be trying to press as many advantages as they can in the early game especially since their late game isn't so spe spectacular with only you know with two AP threats with a Kha'Zix that you know has certain flaws in team fights, and with a Lucian that you know does okay in the lake in the later you know past the 40 minute mark. So, you know if you're a member of LGD, I would you know I would be thinking we really got to get the show on the road because if we don't you know so far YG has been out rotating us and out playing us completely, and if we don't you know YG might even snowball this lead to a win. You know it's if as long as Young Glory maintains. Even just a one or two thousand one k or two k gold lead, at around the twenty to twenty five minute mark, then YG will put, will be in a very very nice position to win this game. So Dragon is now live, and LGD really didn't get a good timer on it. So YG could try to make a play for this one. They are heading down S three, and Gen Long is going to be on the bottom side, potentially make an appearance. Teleport is there for number one. So. We'll see if this turns into a 5v5 engagement. The pink ward is down. There is no ward coverage in the general vicinity for LGD. And they're going to try to use POIL right now as a human ward. But YG wants to aggress upon him and try to take him down, get a catch. As of those soul shackles. And, well, number one, trying to duke it out with 17 up in the top lane. But keep in mind, both of their teleports are up. And we have to see yes, who will try are. to go for this one. So... I mean, you know, just just because of the, you know, just because of how the quote unquote early game composition coming out from the side of, oh, we might see, see a gank onto the vein right here. I mean, final hour is pretty much already down, so jumming in, Quan actually not going to get Zenith played up. Solar Flare stacking though, and oh, nice Quan goes down for the count, killing the jungle to Yin Fu. Mega Inferno bomb teleports coming to the bottom as well, and Kale is still top. Now here comes the teleport channel. So mid lane turret goes down. That's going to be the Dark Pine landing up again. Condemn to the wall, and XQ, he's going to get knocked back. But look at that stun up, very nicely done. And now Vayne goes down, and they're still on the run trying to aggress. Yin Fu's the target in question. Will he be able to make it out with a flash? It looks like he just might, and he has to repel over to the double golems, but he makes it out. So even still, two turrets in that trade for LG, YG. LGD, despite, you know... You know, LGDs, despite exchanging kills, really have to take the dragon right now because they did give up both experience, gold, and a turret to number one in the top lane. So if they don't make anything happen, then they're just going to lose a bunch of gold. You can see that's why LGD decides to go in hard, take the dragon, and overall a fairly even trade coming out from both sides of both sides of the um from both sides of the map. You again, you really have to remember, Young Glory doesn't have. Um, Young Glory is a very strong team composition in late game, and I think we're going to go in a replay right here. Just look at that. A, a beauty of a solar flare right onto the Kha'Zix, just a complete stun knock up. And this was initially a position in which they were lacking members, where it was a 3v4, especially considering the teleport that was coming in. So, I mean, really nice communication coming out from, I think it was Yance, it was probably Yancer who knew that he had um, the solar flare ready. He knew that he could make a play, just put it all onto uh, the Kha'Zix and... Got, where they were able to get a turret in exchange for a kill and a dragon. So I, so I mean, just again, really nice play coming out from the side of YG. Yeah, YG do now open themselves up to a 2,000 gold lead, up five to three in kills, and our turret lead is now tied at two. So the calling being channeled out, and Zhen Long wants this tier one bottom lane turret. You can see PYL is heading down to assist XQ, but he looks like he's got it just in his oh, control. Oh, uh, Wayless might die right here. 
We'll see if Dian Good can get this solo kill out. Static Shift does a lot. Have HP. Are you oh, kidding nice. me right now? Yeah, nice yeah, one. Awesome. Going for it. Flash. Oh, Take it up. Why goodness. not? Now he's trying to duel out Quan. Can he get this 1v2? Look at that. Does not get the knockout. Windwall intervention. Ah. Up from number one. And he'll be able to dash it out. Make it a nice out play. Now 6-3. Yeah. to three. And look at YG. Yeah, what a beautiful win wall. And we might see another small skirmish right here. I don't know if XQ can escape this. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, <laughs> They're just running around, dashing yeah, away. It looks like the members of Y don't decide to pursue. So nice, relentless pursuit coming out from XQ to avoid death. But really nice series of mechanical plays coming out from Dianggoon before. You know, we mentioned before how important it was that... Wa LGD decide to ban both the LeBlanc and the Yasuo, and now, it's, it's, frankly, it's coming back to bite them in the behind because it looks like they're getting completely outclassed by Dianggoon right now. 2-0-0 has a static shift, already has, you know, the Pirate cut Cutlass. He's looking so strong right now. And again, they they're looking to aggress. Right <laughs> looking to aggress. Poor, poor 17 up in the top lane. Why not just give it to him straight? That is the last oh, breath, goodness. and that is a kill from Dianggoon. So YG up 7-3. Just open it up hardcore this time around, ladies and gentlemen. We're not even 20 minutes in. It is 7-3. And YG, team that's last place in the standings, tied for last place, kicking it up with one that's pretty high up there. Yeah, I mean, I th I do believe that LGD is in fifth or fourth. I, I do think that LGD is in fourth. fourth place right now, and they share the fourth place, and they um, share fourth place. So, you know, LGD is a, is a uh, strong team. You know, they're not the strongest, but they are a fairly, you know, fairly competent team, especially... Given that, you know, and all indications point to the opposite of what LGD should be accomplishing right now. You know, LGD should be the one pushing turrets, but instead they're getting pressured all around the map. You know, it should be Wayless who's carrying the side of LGD gaming, but instead Dian Gun is putting on an absolute show with his Yasuo. I mean, just the mechanics are amazing, and it looks like YG is going to think about um, trying to snowball this lead, especially given the fact that... Um, <clears throat> sorry, Zhenlong's vein has a, had a lot of time to farm, already 170 CS, despite being in a 2v2 lane for a long time. So really nice decision making coming out from the side of Young Glory. That's been pretty much the universal safe haven right now for Young Glory as well. I mean, they've got hardcore licking, they've got CS leads hard in their favor. Look at the top lane, number one. Versus 17, 160 to 117. Right yeah. now, that is pretty big. The mid lane as well, a 20 CS advantage over to Dian Goon. And then the AD carry is, you know, keeping it pretty close. The lane's always going to outscale in the situation, any situation pretty much. So the fact that they are right where they are right now, that pretty much means they are at the best place they could possibly be at this point in time. As we see the solar player dashes in, that's going to be no knockouts nice courtesy of the Black shield. shield. So they will actually be able to pretty much stay out. Now Dark Bind almost getting hit up onto Zenlong, but he does dash out. The calling is channeled to kind of just force him away a little bit. And now dragging up in a minute and 37 seconds, RLGD going to try to hold for that time, or are they going to try to back off and just yeah, pursue otherwise? I mean, this is what LGD should be doing right now. Sieging turret, they know that they have the range advantage. They have a lot of poke coming in from PYL's Morgana, you know, from XQ, from Wayless. They know that they have a lot of tools to siege down turrets, so this is exact, exactly what they should be doing. Also, a really, really nice black shield coming out from PYL. Despite the fact that LGD is losing seven kills to three, PYL's been pretty spot on with his black shield this game, I'd like to say. So, you know, nice showing coming out from him, and hopefully he can continue that because... Should, you know, YG, should LGD and YG meet on equal terms around the map? <laughs> PYL is going to do, have to do a lot to keep his team into that, in that fight because, you know, this, it, the scoreline says they're down about 1,000, 2,000 gold. Given how well YG's composition scales, it's effectively maybe 3,000 gold, right? There's an effective 3,000 gold difference right now. So YG, again, despite losing that first turret, they have all the pressure around the map, and they can do anything that they want to. I really think that this next dragon that's coming out, I'm a little bit of ahead of you. So for me, it says 22 seconds is going to be really crucial for them. Yeah, I just approached that marker as well. So the dragon is at 21 <laughs> seconds now, ticking down and away. And uh, I kind of got to wonder, next game, no matter what happens this time around, I figured that Yasuo and LeBlanc are going to be bans. Maybe a third one being yeah, Thresh or Leona like last time. And Yancer getting a little bit caught here, but Quan. I don't think he's going to be able to solo kill him out there, even oh, with that Elder Lizard. Baron is being engaged upon 22 minutes, but there is ward coverage from 17 over the wall, and that means YG are going to be forced to peel off. So try to yeah. sneak it, 
didn't get past the Lulu, and now LGD are wise to their decisions. Also, Diangun didn't, you know, he didn't, he wasn't block. His wind wall wasn't wasn't blocking much, you know, to be frank. So uh, they do decide to peel off Baron, but this is really, you know, really nice coming out from Young Glory. The best teams will always find ways to keep their opponents on their toes, to force the opponents into rash decisions. Not necessarily rash decisions, but you know, panicky decisions, and so. Again, you know, we see LGD demanding this fight, and we're going to have to see whether Young Glory wants to contest it because right now I, th I do think that they can win a fight with the very strong members of LGD despite them hitting their power spikes. LGG actually got forced off the Baron. We're seeing kind of 1v1, mono mono in the top lane, flash forced out from 17, and he will be able to stay safe nice even using that, uh, that wild growth as well. So Dragons being engaged upon now by YG, and it will be going down. So they're up 2-1 to one on Dragons at this point in time. Now PRL trying to go for four-man Soul Shackle. He is going to fall down. Megan Inferno Obama to four as well. Down for the count. And now keeping it up final hour. And look at Jen Long just peeling away in the backside. Number 17 going to be trying to fall. Wales trying to do something as well. Dian Goon picks up one, picks up two. Now on the chase, picks up three. Taken down several, four down right now. And look at this one, Young Glory. Four for one engagement. Take the dragon. Eleven to four. They're just rocking and socking right now. And now Dan Goon's trying to take it up for the last one. Wayless is his one target. Can he get the solo out? Knock up. Wayless is flashing with the summary hill. Satchel charge as well. He'll be able to escape to safety, but even still, Dan Goon has his number and he's totally calling it one hundred percent bluff. That was a really, really pretty move coming out from Diangun. That basically effectively gives them the free Baron, despite the fact that Wayless is still up. I don't think he can contest anything right now. And I, don't think, I don't think that PYL can do anything either. You know, a nice Dark Binding, a Hail Mary Dark Binding. Unfortunately, there is no touchdown, so the Baron will go over to YG. Diangun played that fight so well. He used this, I mean, he basically, I mean, just, and we're going to have the replay come up right here. Just look on the, on the side of your stream, screen, he has to deal with PYL's Morgana, and then he's able to get to the back line, completely destroy the back line of LGD with a beautiful, beautiful solar flare. Goes over the wall, just, oh, beauty. Also, right worthy there. to note, the extra combat stats, I mean, Shen Long was completely untouched this entire fight. Tanked a little bit of damage from Wayless, but even still, you know, that gives, this is pretty much what they're doing. They protect the vein, and Dian Goon just goes to the back line and does his thing, and it definitely is working out at this time for them right now. 7,000 gold up, tied at three in turrets, 11 to four, a Baron up YG, wanting to definitely try and aggress on LGD. Finish this one out. We're only 25 minutes in, ladies and gentlemen, and this one, very, very good start right now. Yeah, Young Glory right now, obviously, you know, even though, despite the fact that it's still early in the game, they're going to be looking for both picks and you know they're going to be looking to out rotate their opponents so they can get some early siege um nice and easy sieges particularly because their tower siege isn't that good just because um they have a vein and they're they have a vein on Zhen Long and they have a kale on number one so YG is going to be a hard press to find you know avenues to siege tourists but hopefully that baron buff gives them enough encouragement to not drag out this game any longer than it should be going yg's and you know yg really is in the driver's seat right now all the every single member of this team is absurdly strong particularly number one and dian goon dian goon is playing like a beast right now i mean i i can't express enough despite the fact that Yan Seer whiffed his ultimate. I think the edge of that solar flare maybe hit one person. And despite the fact that a lot of the crowd control coming out from Young Glory missed, you know, Diangun was able to completely put the team on his back and just have a you know put a really nice last breath onto both 17 and XQ. Just beautifully done. Yeah, so far ahead that they got out of a four-man soul shackle by taking out the support. <laughs> No, no, no dash up and in whatsoever. Tornado, not going to land, so XQ. Still able to survive. YG now taking down this tier 2 bottom lane turret. Quan is lurking over the side, but that was going to be surrendered over as Yen Long picks up the turret kill. And now YG kind of moving towards the mid lane. Look at number 1 just in the top lane as well, doing his business on this tier 2 top lane. Just kind of wrecking a little bit along the way, half HP currently. Answer might be getting caught out, but might try to turn an aggress on to Quan. Black Shield says no, and Dian Goon... He, you can tell how much he wants to just go in right now. 
Yeah, and I mean, this is like this is always what the best teams do. They, you know, they hide in the enemy around the enemy's blue buff or red buff, and they move between the mid lane and the bottom lane, trying to find you know either a pick or trying to out rotate their opponents to certain objectives, uh, you know, to turrets. So just really nice, you know, nice, nice play coming out from the side of Young Glory. And I think that Quan's about to get blown up. Yeah, Quan's getting engaged upon Solar Flare, and the kill goes to Yinfu. But look at that one! Picks up the kill, Ziggs. Way less, takes down Dian Gu, not trying to aggress as well, he answers very low, and now number one has made an appearance as well, and YG are on the defensive up 12 to 5, so take down Dian Gu, and uh, they don't want to, they don't want to play finicky games. Yeah, with the LGD but, lineup. I mean, despite the fact that that was Dian Goon's first death, it just allows him to go back to base and buy an Infinity Edge and a Red Pot. So, uh, you know, LGD with a nice pick, but still, I wouldn't be feeling too bad if I was a member of Young Glory right here. Honestly, you know, they're not misplaying their composition. You know, what, what they want to do is they have a 2 1 and 7, I believe he is, number one on that Kale. So they want to send him to one of the side lanes and just be. Con continually rotate around the jungle of LGD and try to find either try to either find picks or really easy turret sieges and convert those you know convert um, convert vision control into objectives so young glory doing the right thing and I think it's only a matter of time before YG you know finds the opening they need to either go in for a fight or take down one of those inner tier turrets now, LGD does have very good wave clear, and the I guess the biggest thing would be for none of the members to get caught out right now. You know, it's especially dangerous for them to go into their own jungle just because YG has done such a good job of demanding vision control of those areas. So LGD needs to make sure that they don't get too curious and just let... 17 and wayless and xq their ad carry continually clear waves around the map but even then i don't know how effective that that strategy will be given how strong the members of young glory are right now well the tier two top lane turret falls down something worthy to note quan has been using his void assault defensively every single time he's used it this game so the tier yeah, two definitely. mid lane turret definitely being pressured as well and it'll be falling down so yg just out rotating out playing right now 30 minutes in and uh Looks like they are backing off. Dragons live. One minute thirty until Baron Nasher comes to spawn as well. So yeah, you can yeah, and you can see right now they did get the blue um, YG did get the blue buff, and this is this is LGD playing fairly smart. They know that they're not going to be able to do much given how given the deficit and how behind they are, but they do do their best to push at the mid mid lane, try to extend this game a little longer, despite the fact that Young Glory does have the quote unquote late game composition. You know, LGD right now all they want to do is just clear waves. Keep powering Wayless up. Keep powering 17 up. Hopefully, and hopefully, you know, maybe PYL can land a lucky Dark Binding, or there can be a lucky com Wild Growth combination to, or a pick in their own side of the jungle in order to try to turn this game around. You can see that's what LGD is doing right now. They hide in their own brushes, you know, sweep out any wards and, you know, like camp random spaces in hopes mm -hmm. of catching a member of Young Glory unaware in their own side of the jungle. That's pretty much their kind of saving grace that they might potentially turn around. I mean, they've pretty much missed any power spike that they could have because YG has just been out playing very, very well this game. So we'll see if they can turn it around next time. But, I mean, looks like if everything goes as it is and you can predict the future up, I mean, with pretty good odds, YG might be able to take this one home. And that would definitely give them a great start to the day, boost their confidence a heck of a lot. So... See how it works for him. Baron's up in five seconds, and yeah. LGD definitely working around there. Quan has backed. He wants to head in that general direction as well. So, Both number one and 17 do have uh, teleport for this Baron, but it looks like there might be a fight if the members of LGD aren't careful. Just hang on. Oh, man, the dark vibe, but a jump up with the Zenith Blade, and yes, they're going to Solar Flare up. Quan again flashing out as well. The Mikkel's Crucible is going to be used up. Quan using the Void Assault again, potentially in a defensive manner. So PYL tanks a good bit of damage. He might have to oh just go God. back. The Baron is live again. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this one. Jen Long trying to duke it out with XQ. Now the Culling is channeled. Summoner Hill being used up as well. So he's been very aggressive just by himself, but 
Yenser from the oh, back. Yeah, Teleport is up. Gets on to way less. Look at number one just lurking Look in the depths. Dian Goon yeah. just booking it. Oh, Boom yeah. shakalaka. Zen Long picks up PYL. And now Quan the target in question. He's just untouched to the back. Look at number one, ladies and gentlemen. LGD's group. Quan goes down for the count. Now it's going to be him going down as well. But so far it turns into a two for three engagement. YG on the defensive. And Dian Goon still manages to be alive. Can Yen Su get it on Yin Fu? 17's on the run. But Wayless is coming around the back. The heel is there. And... It looks like he's got nowhere to go. So Ziggs picks up one more, and Dian Goon is the lone survivor right now for YG on a fight that looked very good for them to start. Actually turns into them outnumbered down for the count. LGD could potentially try to take a Baron out of this. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to get the Baron just because of how, of how low 17 is. But And given the fact that the DPS coming out from their team isn't great, and they don't have, you know, they don't have any additional particular items like Blade of the Rune King. But Yan Sir was really the story of that fight for YG because he played that fight horribly. And, you know, first of all, he burned his solar flare and they weren't even able to get a kill out of it. And then he goes back in and tries to, you know, maneuver his way and hopefully let number one, you know, have his way with the back line. But given the fact that number one had already burned his intervention you know it was obvious that the kale wasn't going to be that effective despite how scary that champion is so really just not the the play coming out from yg during that particular skirmish particularly yansir wasn't great hopefully yg knows not to do that again they still have the nine thousand the ten thousand you know the ten thousand gold lead so um you know, they have a nice 10k gold lead right now at the 34 minute mark. So it's, you know, that's a very large margin and they are very comf and YG should be feeling very comfortably ahead. But, you know, it's, it's little things like that, you know, where sometimes Chinese lower tier Chinese teams aren't able to recognize gold differences um, based on, you know, in-game items, based on how many turrets and dragons have been taken. And they start to get a little bit unconfident. So you have to wonder where, whether Young Glory is in danger of the famous Baron throw right now, especially since they, it looks like they are posturing around that objective. I don't know, man. I think YG's got this one pretty solid just because of how their composition scales so much better than what LGD has to offer currently. LGD definitely had a little bit of signs of signs of life in this one 35 minutes in by just winning that last team fight in a two for four engagement. So um, we'll see if YG can turn it around. I mean, again. It's really just a case of who can team fight it better. Like last time, Wayless gets MVP because he satchel charged Zhen Long into a stun just right up against the wall, and he just got destroyed. So, I mean, PYL didn't even get a chance to soul shackle that fight. He was taken down by Zhen Long along the backside, already caught out of position. And then. And the, yeah, I mean, just, you know, we're, we're talking about team fights. I would like to, you know, revise a previous statement. I, It wasn't totally Yancey's fault. I, I, you know, we could very clearly see you know, the the decision making at that at that moment in time. But um it oh and it looks like XQ might get cut out right here. XQ is on the run. Cocoon does land. They're gonna see the play him. XQ is just getting threats. This might mean the, yeah, this might mean the Baron right now actually. So but you know to go back to that previous big fight, you know, we didn't we only saw a little bit on the screen, but uh, what happened was that number one had actually burned his intervention previously while dueling with 17, so he didn't have that ultimate. And it's possible that number one didn't communicate with his team effectively or didn't notice, potentially didn't notice that he had already burned the ultimate and so told his team that it was okay to fight, which is pretty unacceptable. But it does look like that YG will start this Baron without any fear. Yeah, the oh teleport was up. Oh my god. Teleport was up. Baron's very low. Can he get a steal? Who knows? Jump over the wall. Oh my god, Ziggs oh gets the Baron. God. And that's LGD coming up. Quan's gonna fall down, but at what cost? A Baron. Wayless picks it up with the Mega Inferno bomb. And that's okay. gotta be a turn of the change of the ages right now for LGD. Oh, okay. I mean, YG has to get an inhibitor right now. If they don't get an inhibitor, then that was a horrible play from Young Glory. Just I mean it's not it's not surprising. And that's one of the things about that's one of the reasons why Ziggs is such a strong pick. When you combine that with a champion like Kha'Zix, it just does so much damage to isolated targets like the Baron Nasher. Pretty good timers. PYL. Solar Flare is there. Flashes it out. Gets a four-man soul shackle, but jumped up. Dangu's going to go for the last breath. Doesn't quite do as much as he'd like. Gets the turret down, but even still. And now here we go. Dash him in for XQ. He picks up one kill. Summoner heal might not save him. And that's going to be one down number one. So traded up and away, and that turns into a two for two. 
Two for three if you take it all the way back. So I would guess two kills on the AD carry. Now number one forced to flash as well. Well, Yin Fu is not going to make it out of this one. And way less. 17 to 12 right now. And a tied up engagement for LGD. They make it happen. Barroned up. They want to. They, we got a game, ladies and gentlemen. Wait. So I I do think that the Skype call disconnected for a second right there. So it's you can hear me correctly, right? I can hear you fantastic. All right. Okay. So uh, apologies for that slight, you know, DC. I'm gonna blame Riot this time because they're usually in charge of most disconnects that I experience um, when dealing with hardware. But you know. Good guy, Rito. Yeah, good guy, Rito. Honestly. Uh. Well. You know, just given, as I was saying before, I disconnected from the call. What one of the reasons why Ziggs is such a strong pick, and one of the reasons why a lot of Chinese players still covet the Kha'Zix is because of how important objectives like Dragon and Baron are to the, in the Chinese meta game. And you know, when you combine Smite and the isolated damage coming out from the Kha'Zix from the Leap and the Q, and the Mega Inferno Bomb coming out from Wayless's very accurate Ziggs play, then it's not a huge surprise that the red team stole the Baron this time. So, you know, what YG really should have done much more to uh, make sure that all their bases were covered before doing the Baron. And that's an unfortunate mistake, but they, it looks like that they did get the turret and hopefully they'll be able to convert that turret into an inhibitor soon because, again, they do have a composition that scales fantastically into the late game. They do have a 7k goal lead, which is effectively a 10,000, you know, a 10k goal lead at the moment, at the 39 minute mark. So YG is looking pretty good, and I think, you know, they should, hopefully, they look even better in the next few minutes, despite the fact that Dianggun might get caught right here. Well, he's got that Banshee's Veil. It's going to be popped up. He's trying to take it with him. I mean, Windwall's being used up as well. Can he make something happen? Gets a last breath onto PYL, but he's not going to make it out. He gets obliterated XQ, picks yeah, up the kill. So definitely, definitely going, getting caught a little bit between his own greed. And now 17 to 13, the LGD. This could have been a famous Baron throw from YG. You, you may have predicted the future, depending on how the rest of this game plays <laughs> it, out. It isn't hard to predict. When, you know, to predict when the Chinese LPL is so reliant on, you know, what Baron, Baron Nasher decides. Yeah, when Bar what Baron Nasher decides, to, you know, what decides he's feeling like doing today. Looks like that um, inhibitor turret in the mid lane is going to go down for the side of Young Glory. So LGD is able to take that objective despite their top lane or 17 on that Lulu clearing waves in the top lane. So again, you know. Uh, I would say that Young Glory has to demand a team fight right here and reassert their dominance over this game because it's clear that they might be tilting a little bit. But the problem is, is that Young Glory's team fighting has been so unreliable that they that it's it's we that I don't exactly know whether it would be wise for them to go in and try to demand those fights. Yansir particularly has been hasn't been doing playing very well at all, and. So, YG, it's not like LGD has been doing anything special, you know, they haven't, y, um, LGD hasn't been juggling um, pressure damage all that well, and, oh, we're going to see another fight right here with XQ on the receiving end. Yeah, we'll see, but Teleport is coming in, flashes out of the Solar Flare, he's going to get slowed up, oh, and here God. comes Wayless, and, well, YG might be caught out of it right now, the Culling Bee channel, Wild Growth as well, Quan to the backside, and he answers the target in question, XQ is untouched, Soul Shackle is going to get a couple of stuns up, Big Inferno Bomb on his several, he picks up number one, and now he answers on the run, he's very low, YG is all on the run, Cocoon lands, and PYL, taking some good bits of damage from the final hour, Vayne, Quan jumps into the back, and that is going to be PYL down for the count, Quan just picking it up, Lucian with one more XQ, making the plays happen. Can Diangun clean up here? Try to get anything that he can, but down for the count. And Quan picks it up, and it's 18 to 18 and ace. And look at that. Five for one, LGD. If you are YG, your confidence is just shot right now. And that might even... We have, what, 40-second death timers? That's going to be the game for LGD. What a comeback. What a throw, actually. I didn't know... You know the funny thing was is that I didn't know it was possible to throw like that. I honestly didn't know that it was possible to throw with a kale like that. So 
I learned something new today, but um, just really the story that the story of that game was that one of the things that was so beautiful about this game in particular was the fact that YG's vision control was so crisp. I mean, they were warding beautifully in the early game, you know, in the first ten minutes of the game, and I mean, just that all wow. fell apart. Wow. Yeah, past the 30 minute mark. Unbelievable. You, know, you, could see, you could see how happy the members of LGD are right now. You know, YG's decision making just completely fell apart. And I honestly think that it's 95% tilt. Right when Yansir made the first mistake on messing up his solar flare and then deciding to go in after number one had already used his ultimate in a duel with 17. So, you know, in the, the I think that fight was around the 26 minute mark because YG had already had the Baron buff. I, I, I think their confidence was shot, and they, you know, YG got desperate, um, began to get desperate to make plays, and this really just not a good game at all. I didn't know that oh. yeah, a team could throw like that. Oh my god, that is so embarrassing. So, you know, the story of the game is that really vision control matters, and what happened was that, you know, Yonsir has been very, very trigger happy this game, and that last fight was very. Uh, representative of what Yansir's play has been like throughout this set on his Leona. And basically, you know, we know that Yansir, including this game, Yansir's past four games has been on Leona. So he's obviously very confident on that champion. But what Yansir did was that he saw XQ make a play and he didn't even land the Solar Flare correctly because XQ was able to use the Relentless Pursuit to barely, you know, dodge the inner circle of that solo flare and avoid the 100%, you know, like the, I think it's like 90% slow on that scale. And because the members of Young Lord didn't have the relevant information they needed to make, the, to make a correct decision about whether to over-pursue XQ, you know, LGD just completely baited them into a trap. Just... None of the carries, you know, particularly Dian Gun wasn't there. Just, you know, Dian Gun was at that point, I think, was 8 and 3, and he, he wasn't there for the team fight. Zhen Long popped his final hour long after the team fight had already, long after it had became, become apparent that the team fight was going to end in LGD's favor. Just really sloppy play, and I, I don't know if. You know what, young glory. The members of Young Glory. Again, this is a young team. They're they're a sister team to Invictus Gaming. So I don't know if the members of Young Glory have the uh, mental aptitude to come back. But hopefully, they they are able to pick you know pick themselves up and perform adequately in the next game. I would also like to mention that I don't expect the members of LGD Gaming to let either LeBlanc or Yasuo through this time for Jian Gun. So, you know, quite frankly, YG is facing an uphill battle right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, a 41-minute gold lead for YG turns into a victory for LGD on a barren throw. Classical LPL getting back to the roots of everything here tonight. And uh, YG, that's got to be an incredible motivation killer right there. I mean... Having such a lead, having a composition that outscales into the later stages of the game, and still getting shut down after losing three consecutive fights when they had 8,000 gold in their favor, and it just just didn't go too well for them. So we are going to see a little bit of a replay right here to analyze. So XQ did get out of the Solar Flare, and now with way less and 17 flanking around the backside, they do try to go for a little bit of a catch. Quad jumps in with a Black Shield. And Mikhail's Crucible not going to be able to save it. Yancer lives for a while. And even still, Intervention being used up on number one with the Zonia's Hourglass as well. Yeah, yeah and we talked about how well PYL's, you know, how how on point PYL's Black Shield were. I mean, her Dark Binding and the way she zoned with her ultimate was really nice as well. You know, you could just see the entirety of Young Glory in that narrow corridor while PYL was on the very left of her team. And just, you know, completely zoning off the zoning off the members of YG, which included, I think, on that side, which included the AD carry Zhenlong on Vayne and Yansir, you know, the source of YG's crowd control on Yansir's Leona. So again, you know, well played by both teams, but unfortunately, uh, YG did not have that, that uh, YG wasn't experienced enough to know that if there was no vision control that they shouldn't have really, they really shouldn't have gone in at all. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe the teams are now going to switch trunks, and uh, it'll be LGD going over to the blue side with YG 
going over to the Reds. So we're going to take a quick break in the action, maybe put on some tunes. And when we come back, it will be picks and bands for game two of the set between LGD and YG. Don't go anywhere. More LPL action right after this. Told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb. 